Welcome to Let's Talk. I'm your host, Woodrow Thompson, and we'd like to welcome you to the second season of Let's Talk. Today, I have an exciting show for you because I have a very special guest. She's a media personality. She's also an educator. She's the past president of the Ontario uh, Black History Society. She's a producer of The Nikki Clark Show. She's the author of a book called Transforming Lives, One Story at a Time. And she's the nominee for MPP of Miss Saga Malton. My guest is Nikki Clark. Welcome to Let's Talk. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be here. Thank you so much. Good to have you. What does it feel like to sit on that side of the room, seeing that you produced your own show? I don't know why it's so scary <laughs> on this side, uh, but I'm, I'm really happy to be here and uh, feel very blessed. So Good. Thank you. And yours was a live show. Mine was a live show, so uh, we, we had to uh, roll with it and, and go with whatever happened. Uh, if a lamp fell or if a mic fell off, we just, oh, that's just part of it and just keep going. Uh, and and uh, it, it left for a lot of spontaneity and fun. So yeah, that's Very the good. whole part of the live show. Very good. Well, <laughs> you have an impressive bio and anyone that has that kind of background has come through some things in life. Pl briefly share with us your history. Sure. Um, I'll, I'll just start from the beginning. Right. Uh, coming to Canada uh, at the age of three uh, in 1970. Okay, right. I told you my age. Right. And uh, <laughs> from Jamaica. Um, my Very parents good. came uh, with the hope of uh, coming to the promised land, right. uh, like many West Indian mm -hmm. uh, immigrants, uh, coming to Canada, the land of milk and honey. Right. And uh, we arrived in Montreal in, in the dead of winter uh, right. in an all white, all French neighborhood the only black family, wow. English-speaking family, and it was quite challenging I yeah, can imagine. in the beginning. Uh, but you know, we, we stuck it through and um, persisted and, and made a good life in Montreal. I lived there for about uh, 21 years. Wow, yeah. so and you speak French, oui, Spanish. Oui, français, okay, absolument. Very good. Very <laughs> and good. I love Montreal. I, I, I retreat there um, as often as I can uh, to uh, get my, my um, refill of the art and the culture there, which I love. Yeah, yeah Mont Montreal is a great city. Yeah, for Montreal sure. is a great city. Great food. So media personality, educator, mm -hmm. author. Man, why politics? <laughs> That's a great question. How did that fit in <laughs> with the talk show? Um, it all happened quite organically. And I, I think it has to do with uh, the type of um, mentor, mentoring I've had um, right. through my parents. Uh, my mother is, um, is a teacher. Right. And uh, my father uh, is now a retired um, minister. Oh, so, uh, you know, they, they um, raised me up in a Christian home right. uh, with the heart for God and right. um, the heart for community. Right. And, and to always to be available for people. So um, they volunteered me uh, to work with people uh, from the <laughs> time good. I was five years old. So I was Very never good. shy right. um, to speak to people and to uh, offer a, a lending hand. And I think um, this is just who I am, uh, being able to uh, step out of uh, my own comfort zone right. and to be able to empathize with the needs of others. Right. Um, so as, as a community worker, uh, I guess it became a good fit uh, where politics is concerned. And uh, I never really likened myself to be a p politician. politician right. uh, that just, like I said, happened very organically. I um, was approached by uh, um, uh, Andrea Harworth, well, uh, the NDP yes. leader, for a coffee right. uh, back in March. And um, she said, you know, we've been watching you in the community. Wow. Uh, and we like what you do. So uh, would you consider becoming a candidate? And I thought, for about 30 seconds, and I said yes. 30 and seconds. 30, 30 <laughs> seconds. It may have been 23. Right. And then I said, okay, yes. And then fill in the blanks and figure out how to do that later. Uh, but they've been wonderful uh, in supporting me and, and grooming me since that time. And uh, now I've stepped to the challenge and I'm ready to go. Well, we're going to take a short break, but when we come back, I want to ask how did all the different roles in life prepare you for being the MPP of Ms. Saga Malton? We'll Good be stuff. right back after Thank this you. break of everything that happened to me. I had parents who taught me who I was right. very early. Um, I knew about uh, Marcus Garvey right. and uh, the Civil you Rights knew Movement. History. <laughs> I, I knew it well uh, by the very time good. I was 12. Closed captions provided by... TV programs, convocations, conventions, graduations, YouTube commercials. Pinewood Films is a locally owned production company based in Toronto, and we're here to help you capture your event on video. 
It could be a Saturday or Sunday morning church service, a banquet, a business function, birthday party, even that special wedding day. Absolutely no project is too small or too large. We record and edit all of our footage professionally with high quality HD and 4K cameras that can be used for TV broadcasting or just home viewing. The choice is all up to you. So, what are you waiting for? Call us right now at 647-933-8068 and there's no obligation. Let's talk about your ideas for your next event or project. The number is on the screen. We're waiting for your call. Welcome back to Let's Talk. I have with me Nikki Clark. She's a nominee for MPP of Miss Saga Malton. And it's good to have this conversation with you. Thank you. Now, just before the break, we we're talking about uh, this new venture that you've, yes. you've embarked on. Mm -hmm. How did the roles that you, uh, that you had in life prepare you for this new role as MPP? Well, that's, that's a very interesting question. And I, I often reflect on that. How did it all happen? But I think, again, it goes back to um, the core of, of who I am in, right. in that I really try my best uh, to assist people and to um, you know, connect the dots in what people are, are looking for and what they need. Uh, so my beginning as a, a teacher, an educator, right. uh, you know, gave me um, the skill sets to right. organize, to create structure, to facilitate. Uh, to minister in, in, right. in, in, uh, in, in that respect. And, and then um, that led to the talk show. I started the right. talk show almost right. nine years ago oh. after leaving um, teaching college mm -hmm. at Sheridan College in uh, the Faculty of Early, Ed right. Early Childhood Education. So with that, I had preparation there right. uh, to change my classroom to have a classroom in front of the camera. Oh. So the the focus changed a little bit, uh, but I didn't change. It's just the setup changed, oh, very and good. I still had an opportunity to teach and to help, but in a different uh, way, and and also um, giving people a platform to share from a very authentic place. And that's the premise of the show, is transforming lives one story at a time. Right. So people from all walks of life would come and share their heart stories. Uh, so yes, we would talk about their wonderful accomplishments, but going deeper than that, um, daring them to lift their mask and to show who they really are and to talk about some of the challenges that people really need to hear right. in order to be uplifted and say, you know what, I'm not alone. Um, that person right, right there is going through the same thing, right. same challenge I'm going through. And then from that, that uh, gave me the visibility uh, for people to see what I'm able to do from the Ontario Black History Society. So they saw that I was a community worker oh, wow. and I also was grounded in my knowledge of, of black history. Um, Let's invite her to become involved. So I became a volunteer from that opportunity, leading to my presidency, leading to people seeing what I'm doing through the Black History Society, thus my next journey, MPP. Very good. Very yeah, so good. They, it all overlapped. Yeah, the journey, everything good. happened for a right. reason. It's amazing that... A greater purpose. It's amazing that nothing is ever wasted no. in life, especially where God is concerned. Absolutely. It's all, it, it all ties together. God is a master communicator, and yeah. everything happens, as you said, uh, for a divine purpose, and I'm, I'm understanding that. And, and a lot of it has to do with just letting go and allowing um, the, the journey to happen and, and just saying, yeah, okay, I trust this is the Very right good. choice. Yeah. So your new book, Transforming Lives, One Story at a Time, uh, spill over from the show. Is that where you got the idea yes, from? Okay. Yes. So the um, so that's that's really the the premise of the book is to uh, now in print form uh, to allow people to uh, to really share right. and and to have um, a cathartic release right. of their emotions through uh, written form. And uh, the, the book is an anthology uh, of co-authors. So we have about 25 okay. um, co-authors, each one dealing with very um, real subjects uh, from substance abuse uh, to um, uh, sexual abuse uh, to uh, my own chapter, mm -hmm. which, which related to the racism I endured right. in my early childhood in Montreal, uh, which, uh, which happened um, not the best of situations, but uh, what I learned from that was uh, my um, grounding in black history. Right. Uh, because of, of everything that happened to me, I had parents who taught me who I was right. very early. Um, I knew about uh, Marcus Garvey right. and uh, the Civil you Rights Movement. <laughs> I, I knew it well uh, by the very time good. I was 12. 
Very good, very yeah. good. Now, um, I noticed that you're studying theology at Canada Christian yes, College. Yes, Yes. Now, how does it all come together? How, how, how impactful is theology to the fact that you're now running for MPP? How well, does that... it's impactful that I stay grounded in the Word. It's right. impactful uh, and it's, it's significant for me uh, to stay connected to the source. Right. Uh, because as I uh, evolve, um, everything uh, happens because of, of God. God right. is my source. Right. So right. Uh, having the foundation um, in God's Word is uh, uh, very important for me as I go out there and um, right. navigate through Right. My new, right. my new role. Yeah, some Christians will believe that Christians have no place in politics. How do you respond to that kind of thinking? We'll have Nikki Clark respond to that question after we come back from this break. And you're not up early mornings tweeting, are you? That, that, that was just a joke. <laughs> I am actually. Guilty you're up, you're as up tweeting early morning? <laughs> Closed captions provided by. TV programs, convocations, conventions, graduations, YouTube commercials, Pinewood Films is a locally owned production company based in Toronto, and we're here to help you capture your event on video. It could be a Saturday or Sunday morning church service, a banquet, a business function, birthday party, even that special wedding day. Absolutely no project is too small or too large. We record and edit all of our footage professionally with high quality HD and 4K cameras that can be used for TV broadcasting or just home viewing. The choice is all up to you. So, what are you waiting for? Call us right now at 647-933-8068 and there's no obligation. Let's talk about your ideas for your next event or project. The number is on the screen. We're waiting for your call. Welcome back to Let's Talk. My guest today is Nikki Clark, and she's the nominee for MPP of Miss Saga Malton. If you've just joined us, you've joined us for a really good segment. Just before the break, I was mentioning that some people think that Christians have no place uh, in politics. How do you respond to that kind of thinking? Well, you know that's that's a great question, and I, I wrestled with that. Right. Um, and I and I needed to uh, find the answer, so I looked through the Bible. Right. And I got my answer, and I also spoke to some pastors. Right. And um, and the response was, well, look at look at Joseph's story, look where he started, and where he ended, <laughs> as uh, prime minister. Prime minister of Egypt. There you go. <laughs> you know, so it is it is possible. Right. Um, people of faith. Christians right. can be part of politics because the essence of politics is really the people. Right. Mm -hmm. You know. So if you have a heart for people, mm -hmm. combined with the heart for God, then you can do a great work in right. politics. And I think for myself, I want to stay grounded in who I am, right. stay authentic, and uh, and allow God to show me through this this journey in, in politics. And you've always been serving, so this is servant Absol to as well. Absolutely. Uh, what are some of the challenges that you have encountered as you transition from media educator now into politics? What are some of the challenges you face along the way making this transition? Well, I think it's about balancing um, everything. Right. Uh, time is, is uh, uh, something that is uh, something that I have to really consider now, um, right. prioritizing right. my time, managing my time. Um, there's a lot of sacrifice involved right. in, mm -hmm. in this uh, new role and, and also um, uh, making time for myself and for my family right. and, and of course putting God first right. in, in that order. So uh, it's, it's about the balance and the, mm -hmm. yes, so the challenge would be uh, making time for it all. Right. Uh, so it, there are times where I have, uh, you know, fewer hours to sleep. Uh, <laughs> there are times I miss meals. Uh, right. There are times where I have to say no um, to spending time with, with friends or going to parties. And sometimes right. there may be like six or seven events in one day. Wow. And I have to say, okay, which one can I right. physically attend and, and not offend the other? So yeah, there, there's a yeah. lot of challenges that way. And you're not up early mornings tweeting, are you? 
That, that, that was just a joke. <laughs> I am actually guilty. You're up, you're as up tweeting her in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> what does your platform look like? What are you hoping to accomplish as the MPP of Ms. Saga Malton? Well, I am really, uh, I'm really, really focused on anti-poverty. Okay. Um, it it means a lot to me as uh, a woman who uh, went through challenges. Right. I was um, married very young, mm -hmm. uh, three children in tow, and the marriage ended. Right. And I was faced with, um, you know, being marginalized. Right. Mm -hmm. um, having it, being comfortable right. to not having it, and being right. uncomfortable. Wow. Uh, and, it, and it really shaped who I was, and learning how to um, balance being a single mother, right. work, um, having the three children and then being in situations where, uh, quite frankly, it was scary if, if, if I was going to be able to pay uh, certain bills right, right. And, and being able to, you know, um, have enough for, uh, you know, for groceries right, or for right, rent. Right. So these were things that faced, you know, that, that, I, that I faced and I said, you know, I, I don't, I, I managed, you know, with God's grace. But... Um, I don't think anyone needs to face that. If right. we live in a, you know, a country right. like Canada, right. where it's rich in resources and there are enough agencies around, why are people not um, you know, uh, being uh, easily uh, tapping into the right. access of these things? So I want people to be aware and right. you know, knowledge is power, uh, that they can have more control over their lives and to be able to have access to what they need. Right. Um, and and the, the food insecurity should not be an issue. In, in, um, in Canada uh, should not be an issue in Mississauga, but it is. Right. I, I visited the Mississauga Food Bank uh, a few weeks ago mm -hmm. and uh, I, I marveled at um, the organization and what they are doing for families. The, the math is uh, over 100,000 families, watch this, over 100,000 families wow. in Mississauga are hungry. That's one in five. In Mississauga. Mississauga. Wow. Yes. So uh, thank, thank God for people who have the heart, who have the time to dedicate, right. um, to donate, and to, to be able to facilitate to the, uh, the neighboring areas and, and feed people. Right, right. Now, the, the topic of poverty is one that is uh, really entrenched in our culture. Um, how, how do we go about starting to scratch the surface of changing that dynamic? Well, the way I look at it, poverty shouldn't even exist. Poverty is, is, um, is not of God, as far right. as I'm concerned. Right. And I believe that uh, in, in a mindset of abundance, we should be able, as leaders, right. and, I, and I speak mm -hmm. for myself, to teach people and to empower people that they have the skills mm -hmm. and the control to take their lives back. Right. Um, and but there are you know um, powers that be that may take advantage right. of those who have right. less than right. and keep them down. Right. So what I'd like to do is to create that balance right. so that people know through education, through the mobility of people out there to help them to tap into uh, and to find jobs uh, right. to get themselves out of food insecurity um, and, and other places where uh, they feel that they have not. Right. So, I yeah. think knowledge is key. Uh, what do you think is the church's responsibility in all of these social issues such as poverty and violence and the different things we face? I mean, as, as uh, Jesus was with us, he, he was a man of action. He was right. a social, right. uh, he was hands-on. Right. He was in the community. And, and he walked with everyone and loved right. everyone equally. Uh, so that's what we need to engage in. As far as I'm concerned, instead of uh, the talk, we should walk the talk, right? And right. and get our hands, um, you know, filled with the spirit and walk with people and and listen to what they have to share. I, I'll I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. um, I have to do door to door canvassing. Right, that's part right. of. You know, right. but I love door-to-door -door canvassing because I get a chance to meet people and listen to what they have to say. And I was in Malton, and I handed over um, a candidate card to um, a beautiful woman um, of Jamaican heritage, and uh, she said to me, "Why I live in this country so long and I can't find <laughs> a place to live?" 
and I said, excuse me, she says, 40 years I'm in this country. Wow. She said it very passionately. And, and I'm now I'm about to be evicted. I don't have a home. Wow. What can you do to help me? Mm -hmm. So I said, I, you know what? Here's my card, my email. Keep in touch. I'm going to find something. So I went through my resources, tapped into what is available right. from what I knew. She emailed me back and she said, you know, Miss Clark, can you help me? I'm still looking. And I had a phone number for her. Very but good. I had the knowledge. Mm -hmm. She didn't. So my role now is to close that gap. Right, right. More with Nikki Clark when we return. Closed captions provided by... TV programs, convocations, conventions, graduations, YouTube commercials. Pinewood Films is a locally owned production company based in Toronto, and we're here to help you capture your event on video. It could be a Saturday or Sunday morning church service, a banquet, a business function, birthday party, even that special wedding day. Absolutely no project is too small or too large. We record and edit all of our footage professionally with high quality HD and 4K cameras that can be used for TV broadcasting or just home viewing. The choice is all up to you. So, what are you waiting for? Call us right now at 647-933-8068 and there's no obligation. Let's talk about your ideas for your next event or project. The number is on the screen. We're waiting for your call. Welcome back to Let's Talk. My guest is Nikki Clark, and it's so good to talk with you. you uh, just before the break, I was going to ask this question. Some people say that politicians will say anything to get elected. They How sure do you respond would. to that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think... Um, I think there is some truth to that. I, I think uh, that it's important to uh, speak the language of, right. of whom uh, you know your your constituents are. Uh, but you're going to be tested right. at the end of, of the course. day, yes. and people are going to uh, remind you of what you said. Right. So, I mean, whatever your comfort level is, mine is whatever I say. I have to follow up and right. stick to my integrity right. of, of what I put out there. So. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's pretty much um, true to who I am. Okay. How can viewers help, especially those in Miss Saga Malton, how can they be part of your campaign? How can they help? Oh, that'd be wonderful. Um, I have uh, an email address okay. that they can uh, connect to me. Um, it's nikki.clark at ontarioNDP.ca. In 2014, you were nominated by the Canadian Black Awards for a role model of the year. Yes. What would you say to young girls who are watching you and watching your life? What message would you convey to them? I would say, believe in yourself. Right. I would say, love yourself unconditionally. Right. Um, there's some days that you'll come out of your home and you won't have any cheerleaders. Right. Um, and, and you may have um, negative messages uh, around you in your environment, but your love of God right. and your love for yourself will keep you grounded and, and keep you positive in, in whatever circumstance you're, you find yourself in, in whatever situation. So um, that's very important. Okay, very good. Now let's come back to the, the political role. Sure. What has been the response to people in the Missaga Malton area as you knock on doors? <laughs> it's it's been it's been good, and it's I look at anything as positive. Right. However, um, people interpret it. You know, you know that that person was rude. I look at that as a really good opportunity right. to to really find out what is behind, what spirit is behind right. Uh, right. that kind of um, off the cuff or kind of comment that was a little bit unrefined and it, and it comes from a place of uh, hurt or right. mistrust or um, where uh, they were misled so when you give them that opportunity to speak uh, they realize wow you know they're li you're listening um, you're showing empathy and then they can they can trust you right. and, and and that's where the connection is made so uh, I, I I like I like um, going out and, and uh, making these connections and, you know, it, 
it's it's been a really wonderful learning for me, and um, yeah, I, I I really think that this is the right time now for change. Uh, I've heard enough of you know the the um, desire for people to um, take things on another level, right? And um, I think it makes a lot of um, difference for people when they see a face to right, the name right. uh, that I've come to them. They didn't have to show up at a party or fundraiser right, or a right. ticket to see me. Right. I came to see them and that uh, left an impression. So I just want to keep moving in that direction and, and you know politics is what it is but maybe they can be a politics that's created a different way uh, and, and maybe people like myself and others like myself can create that right. new style of politics where it comes back to really the essence being the people, right. all about the people and for the people. But remember the face you're looking at is a black face. This is true. Especially in Miss Selga Malton. Yeah. So that, that hasn't been challenging? Um, well, when I, <laughs> I, I could see through the, um, through the looks right. and maybe the mm -hmm. nonverbal mm -hmm. gestures mm -hmm. that they're a little confused right. in the beginning. Um, the, there's a mixture of cultures there. Right. There's mm -hmm. a, a predominantly um, Punjabi, right. uh, and then we have you know, some West Indians, mm -hmm. and then we have uh, um, Filipino and Eastern European. Um, but when we get past the looks and the stares, uh, if, if they allow me to speak to them, right. uh, they realize that you know, she's one of us. Uh, Very good. She speaks our language, good. and and I think that's just the type of personality I am. I I don't really, I I'm not easily scared off. Right. So you've written a book, uh, Transforming Lives One Story at a Time. How yes. can our viewers get a copy of the book? Absolutely. Uh, you can purchase the book on Amazon.com. Right. And I'm happy to say that it went uh, number one. Very good. In 24 hours. So uh, it is a best-selling book. Very good. And um, you can also go to my website, NikkiClarkNetwork.com and purchase there. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. So that's where folks could contact you if they want to be part of your campaign. Uh, absolutely. They can go there or they can go to NikkiClark.ca. Okay. Um, or Facebook. I have a, a campaign page, Nikki Clark, right. and uh, they can find um, everything that I'm up to and also on Twitter as well. Very good. Well, Nick, Nikki Clark, it's been a pleasure having you. Thank and you, um, I'm praying that things will work well, praying that you'll be successful and that you will become the new MPP for Ms. Saga Malton. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Pleasure it's having an you. Honor. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on Let's Talk. That's all the time we have for today. Let's keep talking. <laughs>